everybody, it's Ashley from Ashley's Green Life, and today's green tip is how I transform my kitchen cabinets from dark to white using the Rust-Oleum Cabinet Transformations Kit. So two years ago, I posted a video about how I used the same kit to make my cabinets go from this oaky color to this espresso dark finish, and I really enjoyed the process. I mean, I didn't enjoy the process, but it was so worth the work, um, and this past summer, we decided to change out our flooring and we had carpet and tile in our main main floor and so we wanted to get hardwood floors so I ended up getting dark colored bamboo flooring which I will share about in another video coming up soon um, and with that idea in mind knowing that was going to be coming soon I knew I couldn't have dark cabinets with dark floors it would just be like a dark cave kitchen so um, I've always kind of had a little idea to want to paint my kitchen white and seeing how it worked with the kit the first time I knew the Rust-Oleum cabinet transformation kit was what I was going to do for this video, of course, once again, and for the little kitchen makeover I was planning. Um, and so they were um, fortunate enough that they sent me uh, their kit to do the light kit. So this time I used the color linen to paint my kitchen cabinets. So as you can see, for the supplies for this project, you're going to need canvas drop cloths or plastic drop cloths, rubber gloves, a power drill, a rust -Oleum cabinet transformation kit, obviously. Um, one tip is that uh, if you're using the light kit, I would go ahead and get two small kits. I had one, thought that would be enough because that was enough to my whole kitchen and some bathroom vanities in the previous project and I painted them dark. It did not work out that way. I ran out about halfway through. So if you're painting this from dark to white, you're going to want to probably have two small kits or one large kit. Um, I also have some roller brushes, a paint tray, I also had regular synthetic two inch brushes, that's my favorite kind of go-to painting tool. Some smaller little paint brushes to get in the small areas. I even had some foam brushes. We made some type of cups. I had these just from a project my mom had done previously. Um, you could use solo cups or something like that to prop up your cabinets wherever you're working. Um, and I had some blue painters tape there with putty knife to, to scrape off the little cabinet bumpers from your cabinet. If you take a look inside of the cabinet transformations kit, this is what you get in one small kit. It comes with a DVD, um, which you're not going to need because you're just going to watch my video. It's going to make it much easier. Um, and you also have a, the first step there is the deglosser. There is a can of the protective top coat, the final coat. There are two cans of the bond coat that will be your white color. There's two cans of decorative glaze. You also have some little special cloths there, some paint sticks and some sponges and the little instruction booklet. All right, so those are the supplies you're gonna need for the project. And I get asked all the time, how long does the project take? Um, and for me, it takes three to four days. So I have a little visual here so you can see just how I break it down. During the video, I'm gonna show you what I did on day one, day two, day three, and day four. So you can follow along with that. That's based on what I did this summer. I'm a special ed early childhood teacher. So I had the summer off. So that's when I took on this project. I didn't have to work, but I do have kids at home. So, um, they, you know, you can change the times around based on your schedule. So starting here on day one, um, the first step you're going to do is to make a map of your kitchen. I did my lovely drawing skills there to show you my kitchen. Um, and I just kind of broke it down by the different cabinets. And this will help you know which cabinets are going to go where um, during the project. And then after I labeled them, I went around and put with blue painter's tape the number and letter that corresponded to each cabinet. So this is about what it looked like whenever it was done, being all numbered and mapped out. And from there it was time to start getting out the drill and taking off the taking the cabinet doors off the hinges there and removing the hardware. So I found it was helpful once I took them off to put them in a little cup that will follow them to their spot in the workspace so that I didn't lose the hardware. So taking those down. Um, for me, my workspace is my garage. As you can see, I have the cabinets all set up with the cups that correspond to their hardware and I have the tape is going is next to where the cabinets are so I know what cabinet it is. You'll also want to remove your drawers at this time. I found it's helpful to put my drawers on my kitchen table. They kind of all fit around there um, for the most part. The next step is to start taping off the cabinet area. So the area that's going to connect to your ceiling or the floor, you don't want to get the paint on that. So you're going to want to tape that off using some blue painters tape. And from there, it's time to start step one of the cabinet transformations kit. And that is to use the deglosser. So the deglosser is going to take off the sheen from the cabinets. And you basically kind of said it's kind of just like a soapy solution. To me, this is the one that had the most smell. 
Um, so I always try to keep like a window propped open or have two fans going on me to get some circulation going so you don't have to breathe in the fumes. So what you'll do with that is you'll wear your rubber gloves and use the sponges provided and just kind of scrub that solution in and then you want to go along the, grit, the wood grains. And you'll want to try to get all the corners and crevices and sides of the cabinets making sure not to leave anything out. After that, you'll use a wet washcloth and try to rinse off all of the solution that you just put on there. What I like to do is after I've rinsed off most of it, I take off the gloves and use just kind of a dry cloth to get the rest of the residue off of the cabinets. We don't want any of that to remain. You don't want to see any soap bubbles or anything because when we put our bond coat on, which is the color, it will not stick. So another thing you'll do during this step is to remove any of the cabinet bumpers from your older cat from the cabinets. Um, so that they're not on there when you're trying to paint them. So now that we've done the deglosser on all of the cabinet doors, it's time to tackle the cabinet frames and just the counter kitchen island I have here. So I'm just following the same steps of applying the deglosser with the sponge, going kind of with the wood grain if I can, and then um, using a wet washcloth to get that off and then dry it the same I did with the cabinet doors. And then you'll also repeat that step with the drawers as well. All right, so after those have had a chance to dry for about an hour, you're gonna to wanna to start doing your bond coat. So this coat is going to give it the color. So for me, it was the linen color, the white, which is what I was going for on the cabinets. And you can start applying that. You're gonna to wanna to have your cabinets flipped over because you're starting on the back first. So you'll just start with that. You'll I use my brush there. I just put the paint into a little cup and you're just gonna brush with the grain of the wood trying not to have it pool into any of the corners and making sure you also get the sides. And the, as you can see, my girls were excited to help me get started with this step of the project. This is the most fun one for me when you can finally start to see the change. So this is about what it, the cabinet doors all look like after their first coat of the bond coat. And then it's time to take it inside and start painting the cabinet frames and the, the cabinet walls and just applying that to the area. Again, this is one choice. You could use the roller if you want to, or as you saw, I like to use the brush. And here I am applying it to the cabinet frames of our kitchen island there. Again, just going with the wood grain. You could tape off the inside of your cabinets, but for me, I ended up painting the inside of my cabinets later on, so I did not tape that off. So here's about what it looks like after the first coat was applied inside of the kitchen. And you're gonna let that dry for two to three hours before moving on to the next coat. For me, that was where I kind of stopped day one. So that takes us to day two, when we're gonna do several bond coats and finish up with the top coat. So here I am doing the second coat onto the cabinets on the backs there and that's about what they look like whenever I was done with the second coat. And then you'll just rotate on in again with the cabinet frames and the sides. And then from there you'll move on to applying that the second coat to the drawers, the face of the drawers there. As you can see, I'm not painting inside the drawers or on the backs yet, just getting the fronts. And from there, it's time to do the third coat of the paint. <laughs> it just got a little maddening by that point, but I wanted to be fully covered, so that kind of comes with the territory. And here I am moving on to the third coat of the cabinet frames and the, the sides of the cabinets. And you can tell, all I'm just a little getting a little paint crazy there. <laughs> So once you've let that dry for two to three hours, it's time to apply the final step, which is the protective top coat. So this is kind of like a gloss finish to give a little bit more of a sheen instead of being like a flat paint look and to protect it from chipping and from wearing away. Um, so you're gonna wanna apply that with, and you could use a foam brush or I just used my, I rinsed out one of my synthetic brushes and just used that to apply this. This is the trickiest one. You're gonna wanna watch for any little piece of dust or hair or, um, so just checking your paintbrush and checking where you're painting to make sure that it's uh, clear and clean and nice and fresh looking. So that's about what it looked like doing that last coat. And that's what the cabinets all look like once they were done with the protective top coat. And then you're gonna move on inside to do the apply the protective top coat to the cabinet frames and the kitchen island. And that's what it looked like once it was all done. Protective top coat. And then, of course, we can't forget our drawers. It's time to apply that protective top coat to those drawers as well. It's, um, so the directions say after applying that protective top coat, you want to let it sit undisturbed for 12 hours. So for me, that was, I mean, I don't think I held it to the official 12 hours time, but um, I like to do that part kind of in the evening, kind of um, like the last thing of the day before bed. So that way it has the night time to dry and so you're ready for the next step in the morning. So that concludes day two. Um, whenever you get up the next morning, 
you're going to start putting the hardware back on the drawers since those are officially done. And you can start putting those back in their places in the kitchen, which is always so nice to get your kitchen back in somewhat of a working order. Um, so applying, getting those all back in installed was a good feeling to have. And then that was whenever I started peeling up the tape from insides as well, since the cabinet frames and the walls in there were all finished. So from there, it was time to flip over the cabinets because you still have the whole other side and start painting the fronts of the cabinets. So I found I had some drips in the corners of some of the cabinets. So I used a little sanding um, block there to kind of make it a little smoother. Um, just something to be aware of when you're doing all the feels like a million coats on the previous side Just make sure you don't have dripping going on on the opposite side. So here I am I'm doing the same steps. I did before um, here on day three or basically we're gonna do three coats of the bond coat waiting two to three hours in between each one So once you finish your bond coats, you're going to move on to the protective top coat It's kind of like a nighttime thing another one. We're gonna do near the end of the day for a bed so it has those 12 hours to sit undisturbed and it's ready in the morning to be put back on in your kitchen. So here it is, final day, day four. Um, we're gonna reference our map, remember that from day one. We're gonna start by remounting the hardware onto the cabinet doors and then reinstalling the doors onto the cabinet frames. So here I am, I had my mom helping me out to hold the doors. It made it a little easier while using the drill there to get the doors back on. And again, just referencing your map to make sure you're putting the right doors in the right spot. Um, and that's my favorite step. You can see I'm super happy because that is when the project is basically done. <laughs> so here's what it looked like when it was finished. Um, and as you can see, we did upgrade our appliances. Some of you have noted in the other one, oh my gosh, I know they were super old. Um, so we finally upgraded those. That is what it looked like with the old flooring. And so since then, I have updated the flooring. I've done some other updates and here is the finished product. So. This is what it looks like with the new dark bamboo flooring going on. We updated our countertops there. I also updated the backsplash using a product called Smart Tiles that I'm gonna be sharing in a video coming up soon. And here's a little closer look at the flooring, the dark bamboo flooring we had. It was installed by Lumber Liquidators. Um, I'm excited to share with you about that coming up soon. I also converted my recess lights to pendant lights. So I've got those linked in the description box if you're curious about any of these projects or products that I'm mentioning, you can find those there. So that is basically what it looked like when it was done. I am so happy with the results. I love, love, love the white look. I think it makes my kitchen feel bigger, more open instead of more small and kind of dark. In case you're wondering, I did decide to try to paint the inside of my cabinets this time around. Um, it was a little bit more time consuming to do this step. It took lots of coats to do the inside of the cabinets. As you can imagine, since we knew it took lots of coats to do the outside. So one thing I did is instead of using the paint that came with the kit, I just used a white um, satin finish paint. I used that to paint the inside of my cabinets as well as the shelves to go with my cabinets. So I also put contact paper down on the cabinet shelves and inside the cabinet bottom um, so that it was more protected um, over for future use. So that's kind of an extra step if you feel like taking it that far. Here's about what it looked like um, to be when it was done and it just made it more of a full update to me instead of just like I just painted the cabinet outside of the doors. So here again is the finished product going from the dark to the white. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching how I did that. Um, if you have any questions, leave those below or if you've ever used this product, share your experiences or you can tag me on Instagram at Ashley's Green Life. I would love to see your project. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time for the next green tip. Bye.